<laughs> it was so, so hilarious. good. <laughs> <laughs>What's up, my little pigoos? <laughs> oh man, I felt so bad for that little pig that was on Boozman slash Sakeji's back. Oh, I know, poor little piggy. He was even upside down. <laughs> He's dead. I know, he is. They ate him for sure. <laughs> but, anyways, it's so nice to see you guys again. Yeah, it's so good to see you guys again. Yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm mm -hmm. so sorry that we missed last week's episode. Yeah, go Menasai. But we are back at it again. Back at it again. With the, With the white, white vans. vans. Ooh. Anybody know what that's from? <laughs> I know. If <laughs> that's you know that's from, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not talking about white vans today. Mm -mm. We are talking about Two Year Eternity, Season 1, Episode 7. The boy who wants to change. And I just have to say, I love these last two episodes. They're both so entertaining. Yeah, they really, really were. Yeah, they really were. We got to see so much growth coming from Fushi. He actually is learning so much. He's mm -hmm. learning words, his favorite food. He's learning how to respond to people, having conversations. Yeah, like people are talking to him. He's, I don't know, he actually knows what they're asking of him. Nani. That's, it is all pretty yeah. crazy. And he even learns how to kind of take off his clothes. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, sort of. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's come such a long way, though. I'm so excited to see how much more he can learn and how much more he's going to evolve, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, like, I'm wondering, like, will he actually have his, like, own personality eventually? Yeah, right? Yeah. I I'm, like, curious, like, what are the limits of his knowledge and how much he can learn and, like, how smart he'll be and, like, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years? Yeah. I a mean, thousand years? So I wonder if he'll even like remember all of those things. Because like if he is a genius, he'll remember everything, even if it's for hundreds of years or whatever. But yeah. if he's like a normal person, he's probably going to forget. And then I'm also curious, like, what are the limits of how many forms he can take? Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, kind of like at this point, he he's like kind of like Ben 10 because he could kind of pick at random. But <laughs> yeah, I mean... Years from now, like how many could it be? He could even be Fushi 10,000. Whoa. Hero of heroes. Fushi 10,000. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> and he can, he just has like 10,000 forms and yeah. he's just a master of like, of, of knowledge and he's just a beast. Yeah, That'd I be know. cool. That would be cool. Yeah. And then I would love to see like a thousand year time skip or something like way into the future where yeah. Fushi's in like modern times. Or like Fushi in the future, Ooh, like sci-fi. Sci-fi. Yeah, the, honestly, the possibilities are pretty yeah, limitless. I know. Mm -mm, I wonder. That'd be really cool, actually. So in this episode, we get introduced to five new characters. We have uh, Boozman or Sakeji. <laughs> we have Reen. We have Shin, which is Gugu's brother, and Mir. <laughs> and Gugu himself, actually, yeah. Yeah, Gugu. Oh, gosh. Like, this whole episode, like, I was just so amazed how much Gugu reminds me of March. Like, just because of the way, mm. like, when they first interact with, like, Fushi, it's kind of like they wanted to care of him right away. Like, they, they have this, like, urge to, like, just, you know, take care of him and teach him things and protect him. I don't know. There's this, like, purity and optimism mm -hmm. that, you know, that really shines through. And and another, like, fear thing that, that really, really pulled me more towards, like, they are similar is that Gugu wanted to clean Fushi. <laughs> Just like how Mark wanted to clean Fushi. The yeah. Other episode. They're, all, they're both, like, kind of trying to protect him in a way or kind, they always see him as kind of, like, like, Gugu kind of says that he's, gonna, he's like my little brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then March is kind of like treating him like he was his baby, right? Yeah. Mama yeah. Janai. Yeah, you know, like they're, these children are so nice. Like they're trying to do something nice for Fushi. Well, opposite, well, the adults are always oh, yeah. trying to like ex yeah. exploit him. Yeah, for money, right? Yeah, for money and everything. Well, they were just joking. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't feel know like they're they kind of serious. They were joking. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty much like Hayase too. Like they wanted to like exploit him for their country or city or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. What about... Uh, Another new character is Mir, Nicole. You have any thoughts on him? Ooh, super cute. <laughs> I was like, I thought you would like him. Look at his little face. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty damn adorable. I know. I mean, I would feed him half. I wouldn't necessarily feed him half my steam oh, bun. I know. I would give him maybe like a quarter 
Yeah, he gave, he straight up gave him like a half of his Steam <laughs> yeah, button. Yeah, I know. I was like, isn't that a little bit too much? His size is like this big. And then Mir is owned by Ring, right? He's probably eating better food than freaking Gugu Goo, has. I know. He lives in a mansion. Yeah, he lives in a mansion. How but, a little punk. I mean, that's more to Gugu. Like, he's just kind and he's giving to this little creature that he just found. Yeah, man. Gugu's so nice and like his whole story so far is just so tragic like getting betrayed by his brother and then this whole face smashing incident i know i felt so bad for <sighs> him yeah then, honestly like it, it's even going further back i think his story is even more tragic like when you start to meet like shin and him like mm. they they don't even have family they don't even have parents. yeah like where are their parents they're kind of just like orphans like just camping out there they have a I, tent that's yeah, all they got and then it's just just them and you know they're like working really hard jobs getting so little pay like what a couple coins every now and then mm -hmm. and then on top of that i feel so bad for gugu his brother his older brother who's someone supposed to probably protect you takes all the money and just ditches him cold like oh my gosh that is so mean and then just further tragic on top of it is this he finally meets the girl and he saves her but <laughs> he gets his You're face he gets his face smashed, you guys. Yeah, that's like permanently changing your life I, forever. Oh, poor guy. And then when he finally re-meets her, and he's so excited, and he's so blushing all over, who does she like? Boosh. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, that's horrible. Poor little guy. Poor Gugu. Poor I feel so bad for little Gugu. Me too. But you know what? Like, even above all, though, I, I have to pull it back again. He's still optimistic. or He was mostly optimistic the yeah. whole time. And, but he actually does have a moment where he breaks down right after uh, Reen kind of expresses interest in Fushi rather than him. Oh, I know this crying scene. He's like crying in his pillow. Oh, so, and it's so, so sad. sad. <laughs> but then I really love the see the what uh, Sakiji kind of says to him afterwards. Mm, right. Really beautiful, like encouraging words to uh, Gugu. Right. Yeah, it was so wise. Actually, I love that he. He was telling him, like, if you're feeling sad and you're feeling, you know, all of these emotions, just go ahead and feel it because, like, this is going to develop you as a person. Mm -hmm. And it's not wasted time to, like, you know, really feel how you're feeling. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, just like, what doesn't kill you kind of makes you stronger. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's going to be a really strong person, I think, in the future if he lives. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to get too attached to Gugu oh, here. Oh, I know. It's going to be one of those things again. I hope not. I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to get attached. Don't get attached, guys. Don't get attached. I don't... <laughs> so, uh, moving on, I think the next thing I want to talk about is how they explicitly say after Gugu kind of uh, wakes up after the whole incident, after uh, Sakiji saves him, he mentions that his stomach is, like, uh, larger, right? Yeah, yeah, that is so true. And you know, I, like I kind of brings me back to when they when he even found um Gugu. I was wondering, was he even still was he even alive? Because his face got smashed. He was there for hours. Like it turned into nighttime, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. A part of me feels like he might have been like dead and then the booze man brought him life, back yeah. to life and you know, put something in his belly. Like either it's like voodoo magic or maybe something kind of yeah, voodoo magic. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Or maybe even something like analogous to Dr. Frankenstein and his monster Frankenstein. Yeah, I can see that. He's he... kind of like a mad scientist himself. Oh. <laughs> Like, yeah, he, uh, he gets that you. vibe. Yeah, yeah, he definitely gets that vibe. And then, you know, just kind of like even more on top of that. You guys remember when um, Gu actually woke up, he was on the table. There was actually blood on the table. There was all of these like knives on top of him. And there was even masks on the wall. Yeah. So maybe it's not the first person he's brought back to life. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I and mean, then, like, he also smashes his face. There was no damage in his stomach area, but yeah. for some reason, his stomach is larger. And then he has bandages over there. Yeah. So I have some thoughts about this. Um, if you guys think that the intro or outro are kind of spoilery, you might want to skip ahead a little bit. But my thoughts are, in the outro, you kind of see a character that looks very much like Gugu, or he has the same mask, and he's breathing fire, right? I'm thinking it ha he must have implanted something in Gugu's stomach and maybe something flammable, maybe alcohol of some way because he is the booze man, right? Mm, and then yeah. maybe, yeah, he has alcohol or something flammable in his stomach now 
and then he kind of used that mass maybe to create a spark and then maybe spit fire. And then on top, and then like another thing that I wanted to add to kind of just like further this like kind of hmm. Frankenstein idea was like when they finally show his face. His face, like his eyes are made of something that's like obviously not normal like eye replacements. Oh, yeah, yeah. Almost like buttons or something kind of like puppet, puppet like to me. So I'm also wondering like how did Google even see? Yeah. I don't know. All of this kind of seems like mysterious. Like, how yeah. how did you come? Did you come back to life? Are you alive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, lastly, I kind of wanted to bring up this ring, right? The the ring that Reen gives Gugu after he gives Mir back to her. Mm -hmm. So I'm just super curious about like how this ring is going to be significant to the story. I think there's going to be a time skip of sorts and then they're going to get separated. And then he's going to use that ring to identify himself as Gugu. Yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense because like even when he, you know, he was like trying to say thank you or ask her or something like she totally walked away already. Like, so she didn't even I don't think she even got his name or anything. Yeah. Or he's going to be like that boy that gave you a uh, mirror is me. Yeah, because right? that's that's her ring. So, she, I mean, she has knows. the ring. Yeah. Right? Like, and he hasn't sold it at all. And then I totally thought that someone was going to like accuse him of stealing the ring or something like that. But that never happened. So no, not at all. Honestly, I thought he was going to sell it. Like he was going to sell it. He was going to get a lot of money. A part of me also kind of thought like, is he going to get enough money? Will someone swindle him? Because, you know, like how, how much? Yeah, how he much probably is doesn't know how much like, it's worth. Yeah. I mean, how would a child know that? <laughs> yeah, truly. And Finally, I just want to kind of talk about uh, Fushi's face at the last oh scene here. Oh my god! <laughs> it was so, so hilarious. good. <laughs> <laughs> just love that face that oh, he's making there. It's hilarious. It was so funny. I really love that. Okay, Fushi, Pioran, and the Boozman were all doing this, just laughing. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was good. I was laughing. I was really laughing. I don't know if it was that nice though, because they were laughing at at Gugu working out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. He's trying to make himself a better man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on that bombshell, boys and girls, I think that's gonna end our episode. Mm -hmm. If you guys like this episode, mm -hmm. hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe consider subscribing. Yeah, and you know what? Thanks for seeing us again, you guys. Like, yeah, thanks for hanging out, just spending some time with us, and talking about your journey. Yeah, it was good to be back with you. Guys. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys on the next one. We're going to come out with another episode for episode eight. So tune in. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see, catch you on the next one. See you next time. Bye. Later.